السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ شبہات کا ازالہ پیج کو سبسکرائب کریں اور بیل آئیکن دبائیں سب سے پہلے ویڈیو دیکھنے کے لیے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دا عالمی شعرا فتنہ دا عقیدہ آف دا پیپل آف شعرا ٹو کریکٹ دا عقیدہ آف دا پیپل آف ورلڈ شعرا اٹ از دا ریسپانسبلٹی آف دا اسکالرس پرسنس آف ڈیپ نالج اینڈ ہو آر پیپل آف اللہ دعوت مسٹ بی گیون ٹو دیم ٹو سیو دیم فرام ڈیوینس ہو آر دا پیپل آف شعرا They are the group that left Nizamuddin Markaz and made their own Jamaat. They are called people of Shura because they reject that Muslims should have an Amir. Instead, they advocate that there should be a Jamaat of 8 to 10 persons, each of whom will be a Faisal on a rotational basis. To promote this innovation, they are fighting, claiming that their objective is Islam and that they are on the pattern or methodology of Maulana Ilyas Rahmatullahi Alayhi. The scholars should explain to them that the orders of Allah are the best for mankind and and he is the creator and knows what's best for his creation allah mentions in the quran to the effect whose laws can be better than allah's laws for those of faith and conviction allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam have ordered that there should be one amir in hadith it states to the effect from amongst them make one amir the concept of establishing a shura with a rotating faisal is not found in quran hadith sayings of khulfai rashidin traditions of sahaba or the four imams this is an innovation that has infuriated tablighi jamaat via the enemies of islam the reality has not been understood by tablighi is making a shura is considered deen and selecting an amir is considered irreligiousness the scholars should explain that the people of shura should not disobey allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in favor of obedience to lard and but sahab respectively in a hadith of musnad e ahmad it states to the effect that there will be no obedience to the creation where it entails disobedience of allah regardless of the individual's status to give precedence to the stance of an individual over the words of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is shirk and forbidden in quran and hadith such a person is deemed a mushrik surah tauba verse 31 in surah maida allah has labeled the person who give preference to non islamic laws over allah's laws as a disbeliever oppressor and a fasiq In Surah Nisa Allah has taken oath that a person cannot be a believer if he does not believe in the decision of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam or he retains a rankling in his heart regarding that decision In addition rationalizing the verse wa amruhum shura bainahum to mean shurayat is incorrect this verse refers to the believers being praised for conducting mashwara in their affairs it does not advocate ending imarat and establishing shura further it is manifestly incorrect qiyas to rationalize that the shura selected by umar radhiyallahu an is authority to establish world shura umar radhiyallahu an's shura was to select an amir not to destroy imarat following usman radhiyallahu an's selection as amir this jamaat joined with and obeyed him the scholars responsibility is to explain to the people of shura to refrain from fighting based on falsehood because the hadith states to the effect that whoever assists in falsehood he is under the displeasure of allah until he separates himself from it the order from allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to appoint one amir is an order for muslims until the day of judgment no person has the right to abolish this order to consider that any islamic order is not for the benefit of the muslims until the last day constitutes disbelief that kufr Allah says in Quran this day i have perfected your religion for you completed my favor upon you and have chosen islam for you as your religion in other words deen is complete there is no room for addition subtraction or alteration to ask how can this work be handed over to one person is incorrect The Amir will undertake the work via mashwara the people of mashwara will assist him and if he makes an error they will do his islah the question of how the work can be handed over to one person is an objection to sharia nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahaba radhiyallahu an and salafi salihin because they all endorse imarat for the muslim and opposed to rotating faisal in ashura that work in which is infiltrated by innovation is not accepted in the court of allah in a hadith present in sahih bukhari and muslim it is stated to the effect that the introduction of something new in deen will be rejected and the person introducing it cannot be regarded as reliable after shirk the gravest sin is innovation because of all other major sin only the person committing the sin is affected but with innovation the deen is affected in other words people begin to think the innovation is deen resulting in the corruption of deen the person engaging in innovation is slandering nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that he is advocating that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam left this world having with <coughs> 
left this world having withheld certain good actions which he the innovator is now establishing on the contrary nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam conveyed every good to his ummah and did not omit anything allah taala completed deen on nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the scholars must explain to the people of shura that every innovation is deviation including establishing a shura at the expense of establishing an amir There are many troublesome aspect of shura both from an aqida and from a unity perspective the scholars have written about this finally the scholars should also explain that their system is contrary to the methodology of the previous eras in the time of maulana ilyas rahmatullahi alaihi maulana yusuf rahmatullahi alaihi and maulana inamul hasan rahmatullahi alaihi tablighi jamaat had one amir the demands of the people of shura in light of sharia In an Urdu letter of 20th March 2018 which was signed by the likes of Maulana Ibrahim Deola Ahmed Lard and Yaqub Saharangpuri etc World Shura demanded as follows A Maulana Saad Sahab accept World Shura B each Shura member should be faisal on a rotational basis C the effort of tabligh must be according to the methodology of the previous three Hazrat Gs with no changes a new methodology requires consensus D those items that have been added without consensus of shura must be seized E Maulana Saad Sahab must refrain from making statements that are objectionable to the elders of Deoband and satisfy them in whatever and satisfy them in whatever way they ask prior to addressing these unsubstantiated demands in light of sharia certain foundational principle are enunciated a nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to the effect that the creation should not obey where it entails the displeasure of allah regardless of who and what the person's status is b whoever obeys the creation at the expense of allah's obedience has made the creation his rub this is shirk wa in atatumuhum innakum la mushrikun allah says if you obey them then certainly you are mushrik in surah tauba verse 31 allah says They take their rabbis and their monks for their lords apart from Allah and also the Messiah son of Mary whereas they were commanded to worship none but the one true God there is no god but he exalted be he about those whom they associated with him in his divinity In tafsir of this verse Imam Tirmizi rahmatullahi alayh mentions the hadith wherein Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam explained to Adi bin Hatim radhiyallahu an that worshiping their scholars meant that when the scholars made haram into halal and vice versa then the people obey them see in the court of allah only the action is accepted which is according to sunna in a hadith of bukhari and muslim it's stated to the effect that whoever carries out an act which i have not ordered that action is rejected d in surah al hujurat verse 1 allah says believers do not advance before allah and his messenger and fear allah verily allah is all hearing all knowing in this verse it has been prohibited to give preference to one's own opinion over that of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam e in a hadith it's mentioned that reconciliation between muslim is not permissible if it entails making haram into halal and vice versa another hadith mentions to the effect that whoever assist in promoting falsehood he remains in the displeasure of allah until he withdraws first sharia ruling pertaining to the demand each shura members should be faisal on a rotational basis this demand is a contravention of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam's order and the ijma of the ummah in addition it's illogical and a modern insidious innovation that is detrimental to the unity of the ummah to forcefully promote an ideology contrary to sharia is haram Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in an authentic hadith to the effect that when three are traveling make one an amir this instruction is formatted as a command and a command has the status of wajib in the explanation of this hadith ulama have written that when it is religiously prescribed that there should be an amir when three people are traveling it follows that for a larger jamaat to combat opposition fulfill the needs of the muslims and to maintain unity and agreement an amir is required the dictate of logic is that one amir is necessary to achieve unity if a country has 10 rotating presidents will it not be the subject of differences sadly the enemies of islam have concocted such a cute plot with tablighi jamaat that our brothers have failed to understand the issue mufti zainul abidin rahmatullahi alaihi said that in future this concept of shura will become a huge fitna this demand of shura is also contrary to the pattern of effort under the three previous hazrat gs where there was only one amir rotating faisal is the sunna of the enemy of islam that is communism it is not the sunna of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
Amongst those making this demand are those that outrageously advocate that they should be one of the designated vessels, a demand which has been prohibited by Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In a hadith of Muslim, it states to the effect that we never give a position of responsibility to a person who demands it. Second, Sharia ruling pertaining to the demand. The effort of tablighs must be according to the methodology of the previous three Hazrat Gs with no changes. This demand is contrary to the command of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In a hadith of Abu Dawud, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated to the effect that I counsel you to fear Allah and listen to and obey the Amir, even if he is an Abyssinian slave. Whoever lives after me will see much ikhtilaf. In that time, follow and hold fast to my Sunnah and the Sunnah of the Khulafai Rashidi. Therefore, Deen and the effort of Deen will be accepted only if it is in accordance with the Sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Khulafai Rashidin. Because everybody else can be mistaken. Our previous elders that have been used as example are also our examples. Maulana Yusuf Rahmatullahi Alaihi was told to write a book on the principles of tablighs. He replied, "Dawa is for all the Muslim Ummah, and I am but just one individual of that Ummah. It is not wajib for you to obey me. I do not wish to join the Ummah of my opinion or methodology. Nor do I envisage such a thing occurring." I have written Hayatul Sahaba. Extract the principle from there and continue following them. Reference: Introduction to Arabic Hayatul Sahaba by Maulana Ilyas Barabanki, page number twenty-nine. Some people are under the misconception that Deen and the effort of Deen is only correct if it is in accordance with that laid down by the three previous Hazrat Gs. If not, then it is incorrect, even if it appears in Hadith. Only that much Deen must be compiled with that was taught to us by the three previous Hazrat Gs. Other fallacious argue that thought the medium of Malan Yusuf Rahmatullahi Alai Allah has endorsed the methodology of the effort of Dawa. If anybody undertakes the effort in accordance with his example, then his effort are accepted. Otherwise, not. This argument is against Quran in a Hadith. The only example until the Day of Judgment is Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Sahab. Nobody knows how many mujaddids such as Maulana Ilyas rahmatullahi alayhi will come into this world. He himself said, "Whatever Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam bought must come alive in the ummah, and the ummah must reach the level at which Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam left it when he departed from this world." Third, those items which have been added without shura's consensus must be seized. First, muntakhab hadith. Muntakhab hadith is exclusively Quran and Sunnah, which Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam have instructed us to learn and teach. The only objection for leaving this dini obligation is because it is not their opinion. Are we duty bound to follow their opinion when acting upon Deen? Maulana Yusuf Rahmatullahi Alaihi said, "I am writing this book so that people can understand and learn the six point in light of Quran and a Hadith." In his writings, Maulana Sayyid Khan Sahab Rahmatullahi Alaihi encouraged talim from muntakhab Hadith as a cure to the ignorance of the workers. Why are this sincerity? Allah Taala made it such that after Quran Sharif, this kitab is amongst those which the Ummah has taken most benefit from. It has been translated into approximately more than hundred languages, and talim from it takes place. is virtually all over the world including amongst the arabs talim from this kitab was endorsed by mashwara objections were raised after mashwara instead of restraining the drunkards from drink and the adulterers from adultery people are engaged in fighting to restrict the zikr of allah astounding second talim of quran in the home the restriction of this amal is in fact restriction of the sunnah that took place in the houses of the wives of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah mentions this amal in Quran. وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُطْلَى فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ لَطِيفًا خَبِيرًا. This amal is also mentioned in the letter of Hazrat Ji Maulana Inam Al Hasan Rahmatullahi Alaihi. Third, establishing makadib for children in the masajid. The people of Shura say dawa for this should not be given. Yet a hadith emphasizes its importance, and in this era, contemplate how necessary it is. Fourth, masjid abadi, tamire masjid. People of Shura also advocate that making effort to occupy the masajid with constant amal should not be done, and people should not be brought to the masjid immediately via gusht or jawla. Abu Huraira radhiyallahu an however went to the bazaar and gave dawa to the people to come to the masjid this is like taalimi gash it's not an innovation through this amal masjid will become populated which is the purpose masjid abadi was agreed in mashwara and all the elders signatures are present regarding this matter 
Fourth, Molana Saad Sahab must refrain from making statements that are objectionable to the elders of Deoban and satisfy them in whatever way they ask. Some objections by certain ulama of Deoban regarding the statements of Molana Saad Sahab are from approximately 10 to 15 years ago, which he retracted at the time. Witnesses are present to verify this. To discredit Molana Saad, opponents of his brought these issues to the fore again after the demise of Molana Zubairul Hassan Rahmatullahi Alayh. Why were these issues not brought up until then? People of understanding will decipher the underlying reasons. Regarding other supposedly objectionable statements, any fair-minded impartial scholar on investigation will find that in light of Quran and Hadith, several of the objections are invalid. In fact, certain statements are found in Ahadith, the sayings of Umar and those of eminent Sahaba. Others are proven by reference to the Tabi'een, Muhaddisin, Mufassirin and Mashayikh such as Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Alayh. The reality of the objections against the statements of Maulana Saad Sahab can be investigated by referring to Mazahir al-Ulum Saharangpur. Under the auspices of Maulana Salman Sahab, a Jamaat of Ulma and Muhaddisin investigated every supposedly objectionable statement of Maulana Saad Sahab. For the individual that fears reckoning, he should first read the findings of Mazahirul Ulum before wagging his tongue. Remember, the status of Mazahirul Ulum Saharangpur is not less than that of Darul Ulum Deoban. Mazahirul Ulum was established before Deoban. Despite not needing to, it is known worldwide that Maulana Saad Sahab issued several retractions, both in writing and publicly. Do the people of Shura want him to make sajuda to Deoban? Hazrat issued retractions so that the ties between ulama and the public are maintained and so that people do not develop ill feelings toward the ulama. It is important to understand that the fatwa of Deoban is not the consensus of the ulama of Deoban. Some opposed the fatwa and others resigned from the madarsa in protest. The son of Adam makes mistakes and the best of sinners is the one that retracts. Mistakes are made by those that do the work. When it is clear in light of Quran and Ahadith that the demands are contrary to Sharia, those that are desirous to truth and unity of the Ummah should cease fighting on the premise of falsehood. These issues have been more damaging than if all the non-Muslims have clubbed together to harm the work of Dawa. As for those making the demands which has resulted in the formation of factions and separate marakis, they should make tawbah for who knows what the outcome will be in the hereafter, what faith will they show to Allah and his Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam after spreading corruption in the ummah Allah says surely you have nothing to do with those who have made divisions in their religion and become factions their matter is with Allah and he will indeed tell them in time that they have been doing surah 6 verse 159 in the explanation of this verse, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed Aisha radiallahu anha to the effect, O oh Aisha, these people who act according to their desires are innovators. For every person there is forgiveness except an innovator. I am free from him and he is free from me. Those that follow elders acting contrary to Sharia or assist those making anti-Sharia demands should also make tawbah. Let it not be such that on the day of judgment they are of those that fall Within the previews of the following verses, the day their faces will be rolled in the fire, they will say, Oh, would that we had obeyed Allah and obeyed the Messenger. And they will say, Our Lord, we obeyed our chiefs and our elders and they make us go astray from the path. Surah 33 verse 66 to 67 the way to salvation and the test to differentiate between truth and falsehood. A hadith in Tirmizi mentioned to the effect, Indeed, Bani Israel was divided into 72 sects. This ummah will be divided into 73 sects. All will enter Jahannam except one. Sahaba inquired which group that would be. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa replied to the effect that the one I and my Sahaba are on. So this is the prescription to follow at the time of ikhtilaf until the day of judgment. Shaitan will tell us, these are our elders, how can they be wrong? We cannot comprehend this. But we must look at Allah and His Rasul wasallam as they are the greatest. The path to salvation is the one that Nabi wasallam and Sahaba were on. On behalf of the Muftis of Deoban, Mazahir and Nadwa, our forefathers who were great commentators of Quran, disrespectful, deviated and irreverent? Or is it the case that those labeling them as deviant are themselves deviant? 
judge for yourself. This is an admonition against the fatwa attributed to the Oban, which has several errors, the result being the certain individuals of the Ummah have become deviated. People have left the work of Dawa, infighting has begun, and group have been formed. Even the Ulma Haq have become divided. وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى قَالَ هُمْ أُولَاءِ عَلَىٰ أَثَرِي وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّ لِتَرْضَىٰ قَالَ فَإِنَّ قَدْ فَتَنَّا قَوْمَكَ مِنْ بَعْدِكَ وَأَضَلَّهُمُ السَّامِرِي Explanation These verses are conversation between Allah Ta'ala and Musa alayhi salam in which Musa alayhi salam is admonished as follows. Why did you hastily leave your people? In other words, what was the cause of not bringing your people with you? Musa alayhi salam in accordance with his understanding replied, They are here. They are on their way. I came hurriedly so that you become happy that I fulfilled your command in a timely manner. Allah Ta'ala replied, In your absence, I have put your people into a trial. Samiri has deviated them. Essence of the explanation in Ma'riful Quran, Volume 6, Page 132. The purpose of Quran narrating this conversation is to demonstrate how Allah Ta'ala Himself undertakes tarbiyah of special people in the work of Dawa. It was never to disrespect His Nabi. These verses are a lesson for us that in engaging in individual good actions, we must not become unaware of our responsibility to guide and guard the Ummah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Tafsir Ruhul Ma'ani, Volume 8, Page Number 550, it is categorically stated that from 600,000 Bani Israel, 588,000 become the victims of fitna. In the explanation of these verses, Maulana Saad Sahib referred to his pious predecessors to demonstrate the importance of Dawa. In a short span, the majority of Bani Israel become apostate due to the absence of Dawa. Therefore, if we leave the work of Dawa or become lazy, what calamity will befall the Ummah? These rationale of Maulana Saad Sahib is valid. The objectors say that this is disrespect of a prophet and have passed a fatwa of deviance against Maulana Saad Sahib. The response to this accusation is that Maulana Saad Sahab's explanation of these verses was not his derivation from authentic sources of his opinion. Rather, he was presenting the opinion of those Akabirin that the Ummah holds in high esteem. Therefore, those that passed and endorsed the fatwa against Maulana Saad Sahab of disrespecting a prophet are in fact accusing our Akabirin. Are they saying that Mufti Muhammad Shafi Sahab Rahmatullahi Alayh, who is the pioneer of the Ulma of Deoband, was deviated? In Ma'rif al Quran, volume 6, page number 134, Mufti Shafi writes, referring to Ruhul Ma'ani, Allah Ta'ala asked the question to guide Musa alayhi salam with regards the tarbiyah of his ummah and to admonish him regarding his haste so that he may be reminded that the dictate of prophethood was that Musa alayhi salam should have kept watch over his people by bringing them with him. The consequence of his haste was that Samiri deviated them. Further, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Alayh states in his tafsir, volume 3, pages 158 to 159, that Allah admonished Musa alayhi salam on his haste and told him his responsibility was that he should have bought his people with him. By leaving them, it became the means of putting them into a great trial. Therefore, do those passing fatwa regard Sheikh Abdul Qadir Rahmatullahi Alayh as deviated and showing disrespect to a prophet? Similarly, do they regard Maulana Jamaluddin Bulanshahri as deviated? In tafsir e Jamalain, Volume 4, page number 212, he writes that the object was not interrogation but to admonish Musa alayhi salam that the purpose of prophethood was that he should have kept an eye on his people by keeping them with him. By being hasty, the outcome was that Samiri deviated the people. See Allama Razi in Tafsir Razi, volume 22, page 98. Sheikh Akbar Allama ibn Arabi, Tafsir Mazhari, volume 6, page 156. Ruhul Ma'ani, volume 8, page number 552. Zahratul Tafsir, Volume 9, have narrated the incident in similar fashion. Are they and others who have narrated the story in similar fashion also deviated and disrespectful of Musa a.s. Those that have passed a false fatwa by deception against Maulana Saad Sahib and disrespected him should prepare to answer for their action in the hereafter. Essential clarification. Three people are responsible for the fatwa. The remaining mufti that signed either did so under duress and or fear. They were not afforded the opportunity to read and contemplate over the fatwa. While teaching, they were told to sign or risk dismissal. Some muftis resigned on this issue. Hazrat Maulana Saad Sahab's retraction was to bring clarity to the masses. The reality is that a retraction is from falsehood. Therefore, Sheikh Al-Hadith Yunus Sahab Jaunpuri Rahmatullahi Alayh 
एंड हजरत सैयद राबे हसन नदवी दामद बरकाता हूँ बोथ फॉर बेड मौलाना साथ साफ